Hey everybody, how's it going? So today I want to discuss Apple adding Macs to their independent repair provider program. I talked about this program a little bit when it first came out. I actually did say, thank you, Apple, turning over a new leaf. Congratulations, Apple, for doing a good thing, helping independents buy parts with their independent repair provider program. The idea with the independent repair provider program is that people who are not an Apple authorized repair center would be able to purchase parts, they'd have access to manuals, all the good stuff that we've been advocating for for a really long time so that we could work on their products without the illegitimate supply chain. What is the problem there? Well, fortunately, reality eventually hit me. Now, a lot of people said that I was an idiot for saying thank you, Apple and trying to accept the olive branch that it seems that they extended. And unfortunately, many of you were correct. I did try to assume the best of Apple, but that, that doesn't really work. And it didn't really... It's kind of, honestly, at this point, a silly thing to do because it's not like anybody from the R apples of the world really care anyway. But if you take a look... I did another video about their independent repair program being a useless PR stunt, and then when I finally got all the information on this program, I just put up my, my middle finger to it. And I want to explain why. So there's a few things that are really, really terrible with this program. The first is that when it came out for iPhones, it was screens and batteries. Do you want a headphone jack for an iPhone 6S? Nothing for you. Do you want a charge port? Nothing for you. Do you need a microphone, earpiece, any other part of the phone? No, you, you, get, you get nothing. Secondly, ordering parts. In a video that I did a really long time ago, I discussed how repair shops should stock parts to do their jobs. Uh, this is a really crappily poor done video back from when I was too lazy to get haircuts. And this is, but, but you can watch it to get the idea there. I think that if you're going to be a successful repair shop, if you have a common repair that customers regularly come to you for, you need to have those parts in stock so that you can give them a five to 10 minute turnaround time rather than a one to two week turnaround time. I'm not expecting you to give people instant turnaround times on board repair and data recovery, but a battery replacement, like that should be something, if it's not glued in, that you should be able to do fairly quickly. Now, the way the Apple Independent Repair Provider Program works is I can't stock batteries. So right now in the store, I have at least two or 300 batteries here for all different models of devices so that when a customer comes in, I can get the repair done quickly. With this program, I can't stock the battery. I can't buy five or 10 or 20 batteries. I need to order them piecemeal. So let's say you're a customer and you walk in with an iPhone 7 and you want the battery replaced. Can't stock it. I need to take down your information, take down your IMEI and the serial number of your phone, make an order specifically for you, wait a week or two for it to arrive, call you back, and then have you come in for me to replace the battery. That is awful. That means that the standard of customer care that I would be offering after 12 years in business would actually be worse than the standard of service that I offered in the very beginning when I went from door to door with basketball shorts and had no more than $200 to my name. That is going to cause many customers to just put up, just, no, I'm not, I'm not dealing with this. There's no way in hell that I'm going to go to a store and pay the store price when I have to wait this long for such a basic service. So, most parts are not available. The parts that are available have ridiculous wait times. And let's not even get into what I discussed in, this, in the other video that I did, where if you want to be able to uh, work on the products, you need to take down all of the customer information. Even BlackBerry was matched. You almost shook her collar off in this video. You have to take down their address, their phone number, a bunch of their personal data. Now, with my business, you need to give me your name and all, some basic stuff. But if you say, I don't really want to give you my home address, I'm just dropping off something for a battery replacement, you don't have to give me your, your name or your home address. But with this program, you do. I need to submit that information to Apple. It's not even just for my reference. I need to then give your personal information to Apple. So if you bought your MacBook or your iPhone on Craigslist and you never gave your information to Apple, they're going to have your information to, from Apple after you've done business with me if I am an IRP. I find this to be completely unnecessary and there's absolutely no reason for it. So this program, in my opinion, was put together so that Apple can say to Congress, you know, focus on Jeff Bezos, focus on Mark Zuckerberg, focus on, on Google, don't focus on us. Because we're good boys. See? We're helping people repair things. And this does honestly expose a lot of the problems that exist with right to repair legislation as it currently stands. And it's why some of this legislation should be edited before we continue pushing forward with it. Because the legislation gives you access to the same thing the manufacturer gives their repair centers. 
And the problem is that there are two different types of repair centers for the manufacturer. The first type of repair center for the manufacturer is the one that's doing the actual refurbishing and fixing things. The second is the mail depot. So most people who operate Apple authorized service providers are actually mail depots. They're not allowed to do anything. They have to mail the device back to Apple, have Apple do whatever they do, and then get back a new device they give to their customer. They're not repair shops. They don't know how to work on any of these devices. And they don't do the work on most of these devices. So if we get access to the same thing Apple authorized repair shops have access to, that's useless. That, that's good as dirt to me because I, I need access to chipsets. I need them to stop telling Intersil and Texas Instruments, don't sell chips to these guys because then if you do that, they'll be able to fix our stuff and we can't have that happening. That's the stuff that we need to stop. It, I don't need access to the exact same things that their repair shops have because their own repair shops don't actually fix anything. And it's something that's really important going forward so that we don't wind up putting all of this effort into pushing legislation forward that is useless. Because the worst thing that could possibly happen is right to repair being watered down to where it's the Apple IRP program. This program is actually really good at demonstrating how the legislation that we're advocating for needs to adapt and evolve so that it doesn't wind up being the IRP program. In the beginning, I really thought the IRP program was, IRP was someone at Apple thinking maybe we should reach out and give an olive branch to the independent repair providers. In reality, this was probably a bunch of marketing people in a room or you know, PR people or uh, focus group people trying to brainstorm how to get ahead of any sort of antitrust action that would happen against them once they passed the $1 trillion mark and they came up with this crap. It was not in any way, shape, or form, in my opinion, and I suggest that you read all the source documentation on this so that you can determine whether you think it's a garbage program or not rather than just listen to me. I really believe that this is a program that was designed to get ahead of any of this sort of right to repair legislation without ever taking into account the customer experience or the repair shop's ability to actually offer good service within the guidelines of this program. This was not designed to help repair shops. This was not designed to help us pu be pushed forward in any way. And the inclusion of MacBooks in this program as it's currently written without it being updated, in my opinion, is useless. I am not going to get access to what I need access to to actually do my job through this program. I'm, not, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be able to buy the tool that allows me to get access to, uh, T, to A1707 or A1706 boards with a soldered on SSD through this program. I'm fairly certain I can't buy an ISL 9240 or a CD3217 if your 16-inch MacBook Pro stopped charging through this program. This is not going to help me recover your data. This is not going to help me fix your device. This is not going to help me have a better turnaround time. And this is not going to change anything about how I did business, even if I was accepted into this program, which, let's face it, I never will be and would never want to be accepted into because doing so requires that I give a hand over to Apple your personal data. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And again, find the primary sources as to how this program works don't just trust me don't just trust me don't just listen to me read it for yourself and think to yourself as a customer would i want to go to a repair shop that is forced to work under these limitations is lewis being unreasonable or would i genuinely never consider having something fixed at a shop that has to work this way you tell me maybe i'm being unreasonable uh, there was some interesting uh, input from r slash apple as i usually expect nothing but the highest quality rebuttals from people from the r slash apple group it was my ben shapiro destroys moment of me getting destroyed and i thought it would be worth sharing it with all of you so someone asked about the program i gave my input on the program and he said wow you sure showed me that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.